We have had lots of investors in commercial real estate who have come in and said that this is going to be a crisis point, that the government is going to have to step in, um, that something should be done because there are so many commercial real estate loans that are coming due between now and 2025 and that they won't be able to get credit from the banks in the same way to renew or to, once those maturities come due, to refinance. Well, let's say they lose $100 billion in the banking system. Most of the banks can take that loss, their share of that loss, and a few of them, because they did other things, you know, their shareholders will end up losing the money, but their depositors won't lose money. But if you lend money to somebody and uh, it comes due and they can't pay, you know, the, the old story about the banker, I never, I never made a bad loan. Of course, some of them turned bad after I made them. I mean, that, and that's exactly what happens in, you know, whether it's in commercial real estate. And if people, if money rates are 2% or we were lending money out at four basis points at Berkshire to the to the federal government, uh, not much more than a year ago, a year and a half ago or something like that. And if those rates change, let the person who bet that they wouldn't change lose money. I mean, that, that, that's, you know, if you make mistakes in business, there's people, plenty of people make mistakes. You pay for them. If you've got a big profitable business on top of it, you know, which a good many banks do, you take your losses and you, you keep going on. I mean, banks can take a lot of loan losses. But they can't take something that wipes out their capital and, 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 and expect the world to ignore that fact. Meaning that you don't think anything needs to be done on the commercial real estate front. Well, that... I think that the people that the people who lend too much money should take losses. And, they, and they're getting properties handled, handed back to them now. I mean, uh, you know, within the last month or six weeks. I the mean, banks are. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they got some office buildings in Los Angeles and... and uh, you know, Blackstone walked away from something. I mean, and, and if you get a non-recourse, you know, every every everybody goes in the real estate business is told the first rule, the second rule, the third rule is never sign your name to anything. And so you have non-recourse mortgages and they're going to walk away and the bank's going to get stuck with losses and maybe they'll hold the property a long time and it'll come back. And they, I mean, there's all kinds of ways that if you got capital strength, you may, you may decide, well, I'll just hold it. And, and but... That money is sterile for for quite a while, and that's part of banking. I mean, you expect to lose some money in banking. It's not a sure thing on every loan, and you build that into your calculations, and then you have capital that protects your depositors from from it uh, eating into their money. And if it does eat into their money, then the FDIC, which is in effect really a mutual insurance company of a very peculiar sort, uh, essentially spreads the losses among the continuing banks by higher FDIC assessments in the future. One of the last warnings that Charlie Munger made before he passed was about a potential storm brewing in commercial real estate. And in this video, we're really going to get to all of that. And before we do, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more. And so Charlie Munger, what he has said is that Quote, I think that the hollowing down out of downturns in the United States and elsewhere in the world is going to be very significant and quite unpleasant. And Munger said, adding at the time, that he predicted the U.S. economy will weather the storm, but that commercial real estate will eventually involve a different set of owners. So this is extremely interesting, and this is Munger's uh, bare case here. The investing pair's concerns could have been based on the fact that the foot traffic near stores in metropolitan areas is 10% to 20% below pre-pandemic levels, and that's unbelievable, while office attendance is 30% lower than before COVID, according to a report from the consulting firm McKinsey. The report predicts that because of the trends and other factors, demand of the office space could still be almost 20% lower in 2030 than what it was in 2019. And so that's extremely bad news for commercial landowners. And it's even worse for its lenders. In an April interview with the Financial Times, Munger, in fact, what he said that what he said was that the U.S. banking sector was full of bad loans. And in the commercial real estate sector, eventually higher interest rates, lower rental income, and result, it results in lower property values that could send some of the, these loans completely underwater, submersed, meaning that the outstanding balance will be greater than the value of the underlying properties. 
And so both Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett have talked about this immensely over the past couple years. And they are a little bit worried about this. And it really could be potentially a storm brewing all the way up to, you know, leading all the way up into the near future, potentially, and a little bit beyond that. And so Munger and Buffett, in fact, aren't the only ones who have voiced concerns over this future of potential um, of commercial real estate in the United States. And it's really something that we really do need to pay attention to when it comes to the real estate market. And I've seen various videos and articles talking about this potential storm brewing. And it's something that we really need to take a look at. Now, of course, you need to understand that not every single financial crisis or housing crisis is created equal. And this could be way, I mean, it's every single one is different. So it's way different from the 2008 financial crisis. And it's going to potentially, and it could potentially lead to a bad economy in the future. And you really need to understand that we could be heading in a very bad direction. And something that could lead to potentially a crash, especially in commercial real estate in the United States. One of the things that Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, and Charlie Munger in particular have done in the past was that they invested in home builder stocks. And instead of focusing on commercial real estate, Berkshire Hathaway was more actively involved in the lucrative business of residential property. So for instance, they invested in NVR, LEN, as well as DR Horton. These are all home building stocks. And I believe each one, aside from NVR, did pay, does pay a dividend to this day. And this, you know, could lead to a potential, you know, the home building business could boom, you know, within the next five, 10 years. Now, it is very important to note that I do believe, and I did read, that Warren Buffett did, in fact, sell DR Horton. And um, so he is, in fact, investing in other, you know, in other stocks such as Chevron, which was down last year. So he is um, putting his money elsewhere. But you need to understand that according to National Association of Realtors, there is a housing shortage of between 5.5 to 6.8 million units. So it doesn't mean that home building stocks are, you know, bad just because Warren Buffett sold his shares in, let's just say, D.R. Horton, and uh, and he's also possibly sold elsewhere in other outlets as well. So um, now that's because there has been more uh, a more households formed than homes built in the past decade since the great financial crisis. Now that lumber prices are lower and there's persistent demand, investors are betting on a housing boom. So retail investors can also get involved in the space through a publicly listed home builder or the S&P SBDR home building ETF, which is known as XHB. So there are a lot of ways that you can possibly combat this storm that is potentially brewing as of right now. And Charlie Munger, like I said, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett have talked about this immensely over the past couple years. And like if you take a look at, let's just say, malls or retail stores, a lot of these um, you know, malls and retail stores are going out of business and they're kind of leaning toward like like Amazon eBay and really just doing their shopping from home. I think some of this, you know, in terms of people moving out of offices as well, you know, let's just say in New York City or Los Angeles, they're again working from home. I mean, everything is kind of, you know, changing in terms of the way people are doing business or, you know, doing their online shopping or shopping in general. And I think that is such an interesting way of taking a look at what is potentially, you know, brewing within the, um, within the real estate, you know, the, the economy itself and real estate and the business of real estate. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, it's just something that's that's very interesting to me, and I'm sure it's probably interesting to you. That's why I'm kind of talking about this, kind of bringing this all up, and I really wanted to, you know, just talk about a lot of people, a lot of investors that have been doing this for such a long time and what they had to say, kind of putting it in their perspective, taking a look at, at it from their perspective, like a Charlie Munger, like a Warren Buffett, you know, what they're potentially doing to combat this as of right now. And so if you like this video, if you want more content just like this, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more. What I absolutely love about Warren Buffett's content is that he gives a take that was relevant 100 years ago, it's relevant right now, and it's going to be relevant 100 years from now as well. And that is exactly why you should subscribe to this channel is because we provide so much amazing content just like this, talking about the stock market, finance, and all of that. And we try to make every single video that will be relevant 100 years from now as it is relevant right now today. Thanks so much once again for checking out this video of Income Views. Remember to subscribe. If you can't subscribe, I cannot continue making videos just like this one for you. Also remember to click the like button and also comment as to what you think of this video and what else you would like to see in terms of personal finance, Warren Buffett content, and so much more because we cover it all on this channel. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I will see you in the next video.